ಅಂತಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಾಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯಕೆ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ 
So we are all poles. We are all parts of greater and larger whole. So when we are not bothered about managing the whole, but when we are trying to manage only the parts, this is the problem that we start with. Let me give you this uh, <coughs> uh, Now the problem that we are trying to do is that we have different parts in nature. Nature has different parts. But when we are dealing with nature, uh, the attitude that we have today, as Dr. Srikumar was mentioning, we have a reductionistic approach. Okay. Like, for example, we have the, uh, the environment. Okay. But this environment has several parts. Air, water, soil, and etc. etc. Now when we see, we are trying to manage the air quality very nicely. We are trying to manage the water quality very nicely. We try to manage the soil quality very nicely. But if we try to manage each one of them separately, they cannot be managed. Because they are all interconnected. Not a single one is not connected. The oil is connected, and the soil is connected with water. The soil is connected with your air. So if you want to only have a good ambient air quality without managing your soil quality, will it be possible? And if you're trying to manage your water quality without managing your soil quality, it'll fail. Somewhere we go go wrong. And that is called the unintended consequences of a decision that we make. So when decision making is not holistic, when it doesn't take everything into account while we do anything, it is called reductionist. So, I'll just give you an example of what a holistic, a holistic uh, goal is. Like, for example, a young boy, I don't know if you can do it here, but a young boy uh, at a particular age wants a cycle. Or a young girl, or a, wants a motorcycle, let's say. In India, it's happening very often. You know, as they go to, go to college, they all want scooters and uh, motorcycles. So they want the scooter and the motorcycle, but the question is, why do you want it? Why does someone want a scooter or a motorcycle or a car? Yeah, basically he's not, you know, there may be a quarrel in the house, why do you this school, right? I, if you don't give me a thing, I will not do this, I will not do that. There's going to be a whole lot of tug of war in the family. But if you really actually analyze what do we really want, want it for? For what kind of quality, why is it for the improving the quality of your life that you need? Yes, okay, so for sure. I need to show off. Yeah, it's it's a genuine need. You know, you want to be a leader in your group. But then, will you be a leader simply because you have a vehicle with you? Do you become a leader of a group just because you own a vehicle? You think all your classmates will glorify you just because you have a vehicle? When do you think your classmates will all glorify you? When you have knowledge, that's what she says. So, we have to understand that people are not really understanding the quality of life is a different thing. But we are in the 
unnecessarily running for something else. So when we talk about holistic management, we are trying to manage the whole. And whole means there are, uh, why are farms all over the world failing? I'm talking about particularly about farms because when farms fail, civilization fails. We fail, people fail. The civilizations have died because uh, our soils have failed. And when soils have failed, civilizations have failed. So when we do not learn to manage all these things together, one after the other, then we see the consequence is that we have this destruction of a huge type, which no one knows how to manage. We are sitting on a, what you call, epidemic, a pandemic, uh, you know, what you call diseases that are spreading around the world. We've seen what happens here. All of a sudden there is SARS, there is AIDS, there is this. It's, it's Ebola, it's Ebola. Every year we have something that breaks up and then there's emergency all over the world. <coughs> Why? Because the root cause is the quality of life is not in natural. We are not understanding the quality of life that we need. And that is the holistic goal that we we are here not to improve our bank balances. We may improve our bank balances, but is it going to give us a better quality of life? The money that we are going to earn is supposed to give us a better quality of life. Instead of working for the money, if we work for a better quality of life, then we get much better. We may end up getting huge bank balances, but we end up spoiling our families, relationships. We end up ruining the careers of our children. <clears throat> we we end up, uh, what do you call children, not learning to live with nature. Disconnected from nature. Disconnected from their religion. Disconnected from their land. So basically, when you're talking about holistic management, when you're talking about holistic management, we are talking about first and foremost, what is our holistic group? <clears throat> so when we talk about the holistic management, we are talking about a holistic goal. I almost felt like a sheep. <laughs> so, so, when we talk about the holistic goal, so we will uh, now write down. Why? First, 
those were the beneficiaries of that program. Who were the beneficiaries? The inmates in the ashram are supposed to be the beneficiary. They're supposed to eat it, right? They were not consulted. So when they were provided that food, so we didn't like it. This is not what we want, we want to eat. So we failed. Second, uh, in the process of uh, providing organic food to the who are the people who actually cook it? Who cooks? They were not insulted. They were only told you're supposed to cook this. Fail. So the decision makers were not inclusive. Decision, and there's a difference between the people who decide and people who drive a decision process. Normally, the decision process, decision making process, is driven by a small group of people. Okay, like for example, in a family you may have you know, some elders or a few people driving the decision making process. So, first thing, decision makers, we have to distinguish between where to be inclusive. Okay, right, inclusive. Means it has to include all the levels of decision makers. It has to include the beneficiaries. It has to include anyone who takes a decision. And even people who can veto it. We did not take a decision, but they can veto the decision. They have to be included in the decision making process. I'll give you one example. Our people laying in our farm a pipeline to you know, give us water, to get water in the summers. And we all decided we're going to do it, we bought the whole thing, pipes, and we were about to lay. But then we did this, we actually did not consult or we did not actually discuss it with the forest department, which holds about two kilometers of land between the two farms that we have. And they objected. They can veto it. They are not the part of the decision making process, but they can veto it. So those who have a veto power should also be included in the decision making process. Yes. So then the decision making process becomes inclusive. So when we are taking a decision, if the beneficiaries are not consulted, Anyone who's in the process of decision making is not included. Anyone who can actually veto the decision making is also not included. Then the decision will fail. So this is how decision making processes are failing. Because we are becoming too exclusive in the decision making process. Even in the family, if you all sit down and discuss, what is the quality of life we're looking for? Even in the family level. Then we will come up with a proper quality of life. And then everyone is included in the quality of life. So, and that quality of life is what is supposed to go. We are not talking about goals. Sometimes the difference between policy goals and uh, the goals that you have normally in the corporate sectors and different things. In corporate sectors, normally we have goals like we need to increase the sales, we need to reach X amount of figures, you know, we need to do this much, we need to bring down the expenses by this much. But it's not talking about the quality of life. Okay? In holistic uh, goal making, holistic management, the most important thing is to focus on the quality of life that you need. Not money can only buy you certain commodities, but it is the quality of life that you have to focus. Just like Dr. Shrikumar was mentioning, yeah. What is the quality of life? Why are you looking for them? Why are you looking for them? So what is the quality of life you're looking for? Happiness. Happiness. By making the cows suffer, do you think you'll get happiness? <coughs> so similarly, it has to be holistic. They are a part of our goal. 
if milk is a part of our law, a quality of life, then they also have to be a part of the whole decision making process. By making them more miserable, can do we think that we would be nice? By spoiling the land, do you think we would have a good quality of life? We're going to have good air quality just because you know I want to do air quality. I may buy a bungalow or a house in one particular part of the city and make it very nice. But does it mean that I, you know, I will get the quality of life? No. So therefore, holistic making, decision making means talking about the quality of life. And the next point is uh, in the quality of life. What do you, what what are the things that you need to produce to get the quality of life? What is it that you need to produce to get that quality of life? You say milk, okay. Food. Trouble free society. Trouble free society, it's this what I was looking for. A trouble free society. Uh, so what do you need to produce? What are the things that you need? What, do you need? what are the products that you need to get that quality? The products we need to get the quality. Next point. It's under the quality of life. And from what resources will you produce to get those products? From what resources will you get those products? How do we get them? So the quality of life, if we're talking about healthy life, life, quality of life again. Let me ask you another question. Uh, which insurance company is the best? You know, we all will get old, right? We all get old, isn't it? We all need insurances, health insurances especially. Because of high rising cost of medical expenses. It's very expensive to get treated, isn't it? So we are all talking about different insurance policies and this, you know. But what kind of uh, old age is good? To be alone, left in a nice hostel, or to have a family together, to have all the children with us, caretakers with us, with good food, healthy environment, active to old age. Define those qualities of life that you want. Define those qualities of life that you want. And for that, what kind of resources, what kind of things you need for that? What will give you that quality? And from what resources will you produce? So when we start thinking in this plan, our whole goals, our whole approach to life becomes holistic. It's not just making the money, I want this much rupees in my bank, I want such a big house, you know, 12,000 square feet house. And if there's no need to call it in life, in my old age, what will I do? And we all will get old. What is the quality of life that you're going to be old? I want to be with my friends and family. I want to be active in my old age. I don't want to be bedridden. I want to have good quality food, which is going to keep me alive and active. Because if you take uh, very good food, very high nutritious food, as Dr. Shukran was mentioning, that the nutrient quality is going down. Just for one month, if you can find good quality food, okay, the best quality food, just take it for one month. Continuously, you will see the level at which you operate. You will see the level at which you are. I'm just talking about the food aspect. Forget about the others. So when we're talking about that quality of life, 
that even in old age, old age doesn't become a burden for you. You're still able to operate and be functional and uh, you know, active, excited, even to the into your old age. We were yesterday with Madame Evelyn, and we were seeing how excited she's all about her farm. Even in old age. I'm not I'm sure she doesn't like to call <laughs> But you know, even though you know as the years go by, you don't feel discouraged by the whole thing. You're excited to do things. Excited about new things around. Whereas you do find a lot of people just kind of close down, it's, there's nothing else to do for them in their life, they just close it down. So there is a quality of life we talk about. <coughs> Today we, we hardly have even one generation living together. But which is more secure? Which is more supportive? Two, three, four generations together. At least three generations are very supportable one. The support one. Such a great support system. So, coming back to the point is the quality of life and from what resources I going to use. Those resources have to remain in that way to continue to produce that quality of life. So, the holistic goal, the holistic decision making has to be inclusive. It has to include the quality of life that you're looking for. What are the products from what you will get that quality of life and from what resources will you get Now, once you have this written down very clearly, then comes the decision making process. Okay? Now, let me be very, very clear. In deciding what we want and why we want it, there are normally not many differences of opinion, even in the family. Right? When you're deciding anything, if you say what we want and why we want, there's not much of a we normally come to a consciousness. Yeah, this is what we want. We all agree we need good health, we need good food, isn't it? Right? We all want that. But if there is a difference of opinion, usually it is how? It is usually how? And now the problem is that we sometimes do not understand this and we end up fighting. Because we are not realizing that we actually know what we are actually looking at is the, the difference of opinion is only at the level of how? Not at the level of why and what. Okay? So, in this decision making process, what needs to be tested, because the difference of opinion is at the level of how. So the decision how has to be tested. <coughs> testing, or what would you call it? The decision testing matrix. Or the how testing matrix. You test your house. You may have five or six, or seven, eight different opinions. Okay. I want a bike. This, this person said, I want a car. Someone said, no, let's get a bicycle. Okay. We all have different opinions. So this, when we have this kind of difference of opinion, what do we do? We need to test the house. And the first thing that we test the house with is number one, does it, is it going to take us the opinion A, B, C, D, each opinion that is there, we can put them through a decision testing matrix. Before it becomes a decision, it is an opinion. Okay? So we test it first. Is it going to take us closer to our goal, our holistic goal, or the quality of life that we have defined? Together. All of us, we have sat down together and we define the quality of life we want. So, is it going to take us closer to our goal? 
quality or the holistic good? Is it going to take us closer to it? Number one. Number two. Uh, there's always, we always take decisions or we, we come up with, we're looking for solutions. Why? Because of three reasons. We do things because of three reasons. Or we have <coughs> go through a decision making process because of three reasons. Either there's we need to fulfill a need, or we need to fulfill a desire, or to solve a problem. Okay? So the second point is we, we need to ask the cause and effect. Is it does it really answer me, or does it really solve the root cause of the problem? Does it really solve the root cause of the problem? Now let's take, uh, I'll, take I'll take an example again. The same thing that we went through uh, in the last show is that uh, the management wants to give organic food to the, the inmates. And it failed. And they never attempted it again. So when we go through the question and why did it fail? Until unless you start questioning why did it fail? They say no, the reward is we want to eat. They say we don't like it. Question then ask again why. Ask the question of why five times. It's like beating up. Yesterday we were with Madam Albany and she was giving us uh, the ginger flower, right? And she was feeding it layer after layer after layer. So similarly also we need to peel our, uh, what do you call it, uh, why, find the root cause. Are we addressing the root cause of the problem? Peel it five times, at least. And can you still come to a situation where the issue is not? Even though we are trying to reach the, food, food, uh, the quality of life, we cannot disrupt the current situation on which everything else, else is currently running. The finances that are coming, you know, other things that are coming, all that the earnings that we have, the current lifestyle that we have. And anyway, uh, before I forget, I forgot one point. In the quality of life that we're looking for, there are two things that we have to remember. <laughs> the long-term quality of life, eventually in 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, down the line, what is the quality of life we want? And also the short-term quality of life. Till we reach that quality of life, what is the short-term quality of life that we need? So there is a short-term and a long-term. Short term is before because you have the high, you know, very high quality of life that you're looking for. Does it mean that now you just sacrifice everything for that quality of life? Go no. Today also you need a quality of life. As long as you reach that, so that also has to be tested. This is the part. By testing, you test that this also. So here it comes cross profit analysis comes that when you actually test that. And then after uh, we do the cross profit analysis, then what are the other ones? Cross profit analysis. Ah, okay. The most important one. Uh, we are. Um, so, the questions over there. It's not. So, one of our participants here said. Um, so we had come out, we have farms, we have come to uh, sit on now, and we are really thinking of what can we do now. Okay. So I was telling them because whenever we want to take a decision, we are not alone. We have to take a decision together with the other family members. You just can't take a decision. So the decision making process has to be possible. And while taking a decision, you have to decide. So we were talk, talking with you too is that uh, what is the quality of life you want? Today your parents are alone back in your hometown or the village. Do you also want to be like this? 
or do you want your ranch to come to you? Now, these business resources and seeds, etc., you make products. You get products. You use These products we the market or use. So basically, this is a chain. This is a chain that gets pulled when you do this accident. You have resources, you have water, you have land, you have manpower, you have seeds, you have climate conditions, all of that. Resources. Then when you actually use them. You get products, vegetables, fruit, grains, etc. Okay? And these grains, then you process them. You can use them, you market them, or you utilize them over business. So this is a chain. In this process of chain, that when you start doing this, this chain gets pulled. When this chain gets pulled, when you pull a chain, what happens? Breaks where? Weakly. Weakly. So next point is weakly. So in your, this whole resource conversion, to, to reach your goal, when you start pulling it, it will break something. So you have to see that your opinion. Now, everything that we are testing is the house. Okay, we have a different house. Should we do this? Should we get this kind of food? Should we buy this? This is a house. Opinion number one. Should I get a motorcycle? Should we get opinion number one cycle? Right side. Opinion number two motorcycle. Opinion number three car. Okay. Second, does it in test test each one of these opinions? In the house, so many people will have opinions. Okay, some some will have this opinion, some will have that opinion. So each of these opinions will be tested. You put them all in the different matrix and test them all. all Okay. The next, the weak link, there are three kinds of weak link that we have on this scene when we do this resource conversion. Okay. First is social weak link. Social weak link is because, uh, it's because of the attitudes and beliefs that people have. That gets pulled, people don't want to eat in a certain thing because of certain attitudes, beliefs, and human kind of things. So then, there's a social weak link. Second, it, is, it may be a financial weak link. Maybe expensive, it's not expensive. What do you think? And the third is the biological weak link. That's also a very important weak link that we need to Because biological weak link is the time when any biological thing is at its weakest position. When are your plants weakest? Most um, oh. vulnerable. So Okay. Yeah. Her, her condition is that when the, when the weather is dry, her plants are most vulnerable. My farm is most vulnerable when it is got fruits and grains. All the animals come to me. I have all the wild animals, they all jump on me. Grains, we have monkey, we have wild horse, we have wild bison, we have, you know, they all come. So my big thing is that. Time. So I need to deal with it. Biological weakening. Okay. Because there's plenty around outside, they, they won't come and take plants are young. Yeah, it's not a problem. They come, I have a problem. So what is your social weakening? Your financial weakening? So does your opinion uh, in this weakening, in this very chain, which one is it So is it addressing your weakening? This is the second part. And the third, um, yes, um, the third is, uh, so I can take a little time, the four ecosystem processes. Should I do it? Okay, we will do it with the four ecosystem processes. We will write it down here. Four ecosystem processes. 
Uh, in any system that you run, you cannot do it without water. You cannot do it without proper nutrition. You cannot do it without... Yeah. Okay, you can tell me this. Okay, we cannot do without um, a diversity. Okay, sustainability is not possible without these four things. Sustainability, and finally, when we are actually, we all are living because of only one thing. That is, water is a very uh, scarce resource. Right. Minerals are limited, it's all finite. Minerals are finite. Um, water is a finite thing that we do. It doesn't increase. But one thing is there which is unlikely to be to us. That is something. And it is only through harvesting sunlight that this whole system revolves. Sunlight is harvested. To harvest sunlight, you need water, you need a nutrition, good soil, and you need plants. The plants are the ones that actually harvest the soil energy. And the more you can keep your land green, the more solar energy you are harvesting, the more richer you become. As you're, if you're not able to keep your land green long enough, then that actually lost you. And to keep your land green, you need different varieties of plants. And not just different varieties of plants. We were in one that had this garden on the farm. And she said, what different levels? There are the trees that harvest the sun, the big sun. And below it, there are smaller, lesser intensity. And then the ones at the bottom, which they get to the lowest intensity. So we are harvesting sunlight at different levels. So harvesting sunlight is the whole game. And to harvest sunlight, we need diverse, different varieties of plants that survive and can thrive in those conditions. Heavy sunlight, less sunlight, less sunlight. And for to do that, for the plants to survive and to do that, to harvest sunlight energy, you need good water cycle. You need the soil has to have enough water. Yes, we put your prints. So, the opinion or the decision that you're taking is it going to affect this four solar cell, the four ecosystem processes? Because on which your whole sustainability lies. Is it becoming clear? So, your sustainability lies on being, making sure that these four things work properly. Water has to happen. You have to have water, good system of water. If you're losing water in a farm, if you're losing water and you're losing soil, it's useless. In India, to grow rice, and in all of the world too, uh, the world average is that for every ton of food that we're producing, for every ton of food that we're producing, we are losing how much soil? For every kilo of food that we're producing in the world today, average we're losing about 10 kilos of soil. For every ton of food that you're producing, you're using 10 tons of soil. So if you are to earn one, one dollar, if you're spending fifteen dollars or ten dollars, you think it's good business? So that is why farms are failing. Farms are failing because we are losing the very soil which is the very source of our existence. In India, to produce one, especially in the rice bed, to grow one kilo of rice, we have losing 15 kilos of soil. That is one ton of rice, we are losing 15 tons of soil in India. This is how bad we are. And then you're thinking, why are farms failing? Okay. So this is one of the biggest causes of failure of farmers. Okay. And then, diversity. Uh, <clears throat> if you do not have, like for example, uh, if you have a graph, see, you know, everything that you grow, one year your, your production will be very good. 
and stereotypically grow for that. But, so if you're only growing rice, one day you're up, one day you're down. Next year you're up, next year you're down. But if you're growing different diverse crops, you have trees, you're growing coconuts, you're growing all different varieties of groups. So even though the ups and downs will be there for all these crops, but because they are going up and down at different levels, you eventually level off. Let's show you this. This year the production of rice went up. Last next year is down. Next year is up again. It go down again. Up again. Down again. Up again. Like that. Yeah. Goes up. This is how the production of any crop is. Okay. And if you're growing only, and if you're only growing uh, rice or one item, then you're going up and up on this. But if you have say other crop that you're growing, let's say you're growing coconuts. Okay. So coconuts give you the yield, will also go up and down. Okay. So gradually if you have another crop, so eventually because of the yield of different varieties that you have, it gradually tables off to a middle level. On the total. So yesterday when we were in Mother Ellen's uh, going on the farm, <coughs> she was saying diversity is so important. As diversity, the more diverse you are, the more varieties you are, the more stable you will become. Let's take it from your today's point of view. Okay? If everyone is just doing one thing, how do you think do you think we'll be stable? Mm -hmm. In a society, if everyone is only, say, making shoes, everyone is the whole community is just making shoes, do you think the state the community is going to be stable? Anything going up and down with that is going to root off everyone. So even in the society, we need diverse systems of even companies are not that diversified. Why do you diversify companies? To stabilize all the variations that come in society. So, uh, diversity is, is also very important. So we need water, solar, we are, in, we are actually in the business of harvesting solar energy. And to harvest solar energy, we need biodiversity, we need water, we need to be effective. Only when these four are effective, then will this work. Okay? The next, uh, in our the testing matrix, is the uh, best use of people. You can call it the MARG, marginal reaction test, or you can just call it energy test, energy and money test, E and M. As I said, this is the best use of the energy and the money that you have to reach your goals. Okay? And then I said uh, GBA, the gross profit analysis. Means is it what is running the thing, the whole thing now? Is it going to disrupt your current running situation? If it's not going to disrupt it, it's good. But it's going to all of a sudden disrupt your current running condition, then it's going to be difficult. Okay, you should you should be And uh, okay. the last is we also have to keep in mind when we're taking the decision whether it is in line or how the society and the culture take to it. There may be reactions to that. Okay. This is going to be okay for the society, culture, etc. That's the game. It's okay, it's, it's all going to be okay for the society. Okay. So, this is basically the uh, society, culture, and test. So this is how we test every decision. Now these are not the end of, of the series. You can have more. You can put, add more to it if you like. But this is a way to test your house. And I'll thank you again and again. We will keep on repeating. It all depends on the quality of life you What is the quality of life you want? 
short term long term. Quality of life is very important. With the quality of life, you decide why you want to. And the house you decide is. Normally, we have fights everywhere because we are being the community. House, not me. What's the voice? I will end here for now. Um, can continue. Thank you very much. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you.